Welcome to this Tutor to You topic short that looks at the international agreements in place to fight climate change. This is part of Paper 1, Unit A, The Challenge of Natural Hazards. Climate change is a global issue, so requires a global solution. Carbon emissions spread across the world and affect everyone. Countries regularly meet to agree targets to reduce global carbon emissions. However, it is a challenge as some countries can afford to mitigate climate change more than others, and some are considered more responsible for causing climate change than others. The first major climate change conference was held in Kyoto in Japan in 1997. At the conference, countries signed up to the Kyoto Protocol, which didn't come into force until 2005, but asked developed nations and newly emerging economies to start limiting their carbon emissions, setting a target for a 5% reduction between 2008 and 2012. However, many countries refused to sign the agreement as they feared it would have a negative impact on their economic growth, most notably China and the USA. Every year COP takes place. This stands for Conference of the Parties under the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. It is a meeting that happens annually to try to forge a global response to the climate emergency. COP26 was held in Glasgow in October 2021. COP26 was really important as it was seen as the last chance to agree a response before we do irreversible damage to the planet. In 2015, the Conference of the Parties was held in Paris, COP21, as it was the 21st such meeting. The meeting had a historic outcome resulting in the Paris Agreement, also known as the Paris Accord, where 195 countries adopted the first ever universal and legally binding global climate deal. The 195 countries agreed to three key things to peak greenhouse emissions as soon as possible and achieve a balance between sources and sinks of greenhouse gases in the second half of this century, to keep global temperature increase below 2 degrees and limited to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels, and to review progress every five years, giving a package worth 100 billion US dollars a year to support climate change initiatives in developing countries by 2020, with further finance in the future. But there have been criticisms that many of these agreements are promises or aims and not firm commitments. COP26 was a chance to force countries to revise their nationally determined contributions, also known as NDCs, to meet the 1.5 degree target. And this is our last chance to act. By 2030, emissions need to be down by 45% from 2010, whereas currently we are on track to increase by 16%. We need to be at net zero by 2050. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change examined closely what a 1.5 degree rise would mean for the planet the damage would be far less than a two degree rise. A 1.5 increase would still mean rising sea levels and bleaching of coral reefs. It would also still mean more extreme weather in terms of frequency of heat waves, droughts and floods, and in terms of storm intensity. But the effects of that 1.5 degree rise are much more manageable than two degrees. We are currently around 1.1 to 1.2 degrees above pre-industrial levels and greenhouse gases are still increasing so further warming is likely. We need emissions to decrease by 7% each year until 2030 to stay within 1.5 degrees. We need to stop emitting carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. This means stopping burning fossil fuels, finding ways to farm that don't release methane, reducing deforestation and stopping many industrial processes. This needs to happen by the middle of this century. We need to increase carbon sinks like forests, peatlands and wetlands that store vast amounts of carbon to offset any remaining res re residual emissions that are still in the atmosphere. This balance is known as net zero and is a term we keep hearing in the media. 
However, at the end of the conference in Glasgow, many felt that the agreements were not ambitious or firm enough and that many world leaders were still burying their heads in the sand when it came to fighting climate change. COP27 was held in November 2022 in Egypt, with a focus on working out how those ambitious goals from COP26 will be achieved and how countries will pay for climate action. Many developing nations look to Egypt to put pressure on rich polluting nations to stump up the cash they promised in 2015 as part of the Paris Agreement. Egypt reinforced the point that developing nations such as those across Africa have made a far lower contribution to carbon emissions, but they will be the ones to feel the impacts of climate change more severely. Developing nations were promised $100 billion a year to help cope with the fallout for climate change, to pay for loss and damages, not just mitigation strategies, so countries were compensated for the effects that they were already seeing due to climate change. Before the start of COP27, only Denmark had formally agreed to pay. Leaders were worried that the COP27 talks might lose focus and be overlooked by global events such as the war in Ukraine. It can't be denied that the conflict has triggered a food and energy crisis, with energy prices soaring as Russia cuts off supplies to Europe in retaliation to the sanctions over its invasion. However, on the plus side, it has sped up plans to to shift to clean power across the EU and beyond. COP27 closed with a breakthrough agreement to provide loss and damage funding for vulnerable countries hit hard by climate disasters. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on the international agreements in place to fight climate change. Thank you for watching.